You and I know that five times a day we are called in a certain direction. And the caller reminds us because it is that prescription from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the caller to call out five times a day even though we know our duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no place on earth whereby your duty is known what is required of you is known and every single time you have to do it you are reminded again in a loud way it doesn't happen for anything besides salah the five daily prayers it is the only action the only work if i can call it although it's not actually work but it is the only action let's say or act of worship where every single day every single day so many times a day you are called towards it have you ever thought why why repeat it so many times it's enough to tell me once twice in my life that listen you need to pray five times a day and that's it and i am supposed to be human enough we would get irritated if someone kept telling us every day you've got to go to school at seven o'clock you've got to go to school at seven o'clock and repeat it not once two three four five times repeat it for example the adhan twice you hear come to the prayer and twice you hear it again in what is known as the iqama just before the prayer come to the prayer wasn't it enough for allah to just put it in the quran wa aqimu salata wa atu zakah wasn't it enough for muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to just inform us that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon you five salah as is in the hadith for example of muad ibn jabal when he was sent to yemen in the qawman ahla kitab and the long hadith at the end or somewhere in the middle the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says fa'alimhum anna allah aftarada alayhim khamsa salawatin fi kulli yawmin wa layla let them know that allah has prescribed upon them five prayers every day and night there are five in that cycle but Allah says, no, we want you to call out for this prayer every single time. In the Arabic language, one of the reasons, Iqamat al alayk, for there to be evidence against you on the day of judgment. Did you hear the call? Yes, I did. Well, if you did, why didn't you read the salah? Why didn't you fulfill that prayer? We told you, not only did we say, come to prayer, but we told you what you would achieve through that prayer. That means come to the prayer. But you will hear immediately after that, come to success. Every one of us, male and female, young and old, we are looking for success. There is no success beyond that which Allah has promised you. You can never be truly successful if you have disconnected from your five daily prayers. And evidence of it is manifest in the adhan, in the call itself. You want success? Well, we are going to show you step one. Step one. And this is why the hadith says the first thing that a person will be reckoned in the hereafter is their salah. If the salah is in order, everything else will be easy. If the salah is not in order, the rest of it what do you expect? It's going to be difficult and tough. May Allah have mercy on us on, on, us on that day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us. So if you look at the call, it is bearing witness for us or against us. I called you. Did you come? The answer sometimes is no. And this is why when an, a blind man once asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked the messenger, he said, O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am a blind man and I find it difficult to come to the masjid. Should I or am I given a, an excuse, etc. The end of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Atasma'un nida? Do you hear the call? Do you hear the adhan? He said, yes. He says, fa'ajib. In that case, you need to answer it. Subhanallah. I know one might argue, okay, nowadays we don't have, uh, or at that time they didn't have these loud hailers and microphones. Well, at that time they didn't have vehicles as well. They didn't have cars and other facilities. So if you have heard it 
and it's very close to your home, then you would definitely fall under the same category. The, the issue I want to raise today, my brothers and sisters, many of us, many of us do not fulfill our five salah. And we expect success. We want happiness. We want goodness. We want contentment. We want everything to flow. My brothers and sisters, really, do you think it's fair? We did a survey online recently about how many people read Quran on a daily basis. And you won't believe it. The majority of Muslims say, we don't. Subhanallah. The majority of Muslims say, we don't. And someone told me when I forwarded him the results of this, he said some time back, he did a little survey of how many people fulfill five salah a day. And those who participated, perhaps maybe it's wrong for me to say the majority, but those who, the majority of those who participated in the survey, they said, we don't fulfill five salah a day. Some say four, some say three, and some say Jumu'ah and Eid. Subhanallah. May Allah not make us from among those who are oblivious of this great gift of His. Wallahi, it is an honor. It is an honor. Something we should be proud of to be invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put our head on the ground for Him who made us, for He who has absolute control of every aspect of our living and he who sh whom we shall return to put your head on the ground take your time you say oh you who created me ya rabbi you are the highest subhana rabbi al-a'la you are glorifying praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying you are the highest amazing it is an honor take your time in sujood look you want to be close to the owner of the solutions of your problems you need to start off by fulfilling your five daily prayers it might be a simple khutbah but i promise you we have a problem the problem is many of us feel lazy to fulfill our salah and this is not one gender both the males and the females subhanallah we get lazy and sometimes we read it when it's convenient for us let me tell you the joy you will achieve, the greatest joy you will achieve is when you fulfill that salah, when it is difficult for you. Then it becomes really an ibadah that is worthwhile within your heart. You know, sometimes it's very easy. You are in a group of people. Everyone is fulfilling salah. You feel bad to leave it out. So you are fulfilling it. Yes, mashallah. It's good that you have good company. At least you fulfill salah with them. But a winner is he or she whom when everything is against you and you say, no, 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 my salah. This is my salah. There is no excuse for a mu'min, for a person who believes in Allah in the last day. Subhanallah to quit or to leave that salah, even if it is one. Recently, there was someone discussing the topic of Salah and one of the youngsters said, no, I'm a Muslim, but I don't pray. I'm a Muslim, but I don't pray. So the question was posed to the young man. Well, why don't you pray? Well, I don't think it's that important. Allah is forgiving. I do pray on a Friday and I do pray sometimes when I can. My brothers and sisters, that is such a dangerous answer. It's like saying I'm a vegetarian, but I eat beef. You are a vegetarian, but you eat beef. It means you cannot call yourself a vegetarian. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So one is to say, I'm a Muslim and I'm trying my best to fulfill all my salah. By the will of Allah, you still recognize that your duty is to fulfill the five salah, but you might not be that strong. There is hope for you, inshallah. I'm not saying it's good what you're doing, but inshallah, you can get to what you're supposed to be doing. But what I'm talking about is something worse than that. It is when a person says, that I'm a Muslim, but I don't have to read Salah. That's what I'm talking about. How can you say that? One of the pillars of Islam is the five daily prayer. You know that Buni al-Islam ala khams. Islam is based on five principles, five pillars. Shahadati Allah ilaha illallah wa anni rasulullah wa iqam salah wa ita'i zakah wa sawmi ramadan wa hajj al-bayt man istata'a ilayhi sabila. You know the five pillars of Islam in such a beautiful manner that I don't need to translate what I just said now in the Arabic language. So my brothers and sisters, if you want success, short term, long term, in this world, in the next, you want contentment, you want Allah to be pleased with you, you have to start off. The stepping stone is salah. According to one narration, Salah is the pillar of the deen. If you are to uplift it, you'll uplift everything else. And if you drop it, you, you've dropped your whole deen.
Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.